I'm Nina Brown and I've had the great pleasure working on a number of exhibitions at the Old Low Light over the past five years. Without doubt, the one that has been the most significant and most powerful for me has been Breaking Chains, North Shields and Slavery. The story of the exhibition began when a young local historian, Steph Towns, brought us an amazing story of an enslaved woman, Mary Ann Mackham, who, after many trials and tribulations, arrived in North Shields in 1831. We knew we had to share this special story, so a group of old low-light volunteers got together to create an exhibition, and Mary Ann was to be at its centre. She was born on a plantation in Virginia, USA. Her father, a gentleman's son, her mother, enslaved. Such a birth was considered a disgrace and she was taken away from her mother aged 15 months. She lived initially with her father's sister but was passed on through the family until she was used to settle a debt. She was later sold at auction and badly treated by her new owners aged 30, she made the brave and dangerous decision to escape. Hiding from slave catchers and trapped by dogs, with help from friends, she found her way to the coast and hid aboard a ship, beginning the long journey by sea and land that brought her to North Shields and a new life. She made a home here, supported by the local Quaker community, worked, married and died aged 91 and was buried in an unmarked grave with her husband in Preston Cemetery. But we felt this individual local story would have greater meaning if placed in context and we researched deeper into the history of slavery. The slave trade had a devastating effect on the continent of Africa. 12 million people were forced to make the journey across the Atlantic in the most inhuman conditions. As many as 20% died during the sea crossing. In the exhibition, we portrayed the lives that awaited enslaved men, women and children when they arrived on the plantations. Treated as possessions, losing their freedom, their language, their culture, even their names. Often branded like cattle, working long hours in the heat, whipped and beaten without rights or recourse to justice. We examined the highly profitable business built on slavery, selling crops like tobacco, cotton and sugar. Many were made very rich. We found families here in our northeast community who profited. But we were pleased to discover the major role many local people took in fighting for abolition. Like Unitarian minister William Turner, who set up one of the first anti-slavery committees in Newcastle in 1791. And Lord Grey, who directed the passage of the Abolition of Slavery Act through Parliament in 1833. We were particularly proud to discover North Shields' contribution to the movement for emancipation. We discovered how local townsfolk organised fundraising, petition signing and public meetings hosting world-famous abolitionists like Frederick Douglass. We felt our exhibition must make clear that slavery continues. Using information from Anti-Slavery International and the Modern Slavery Helpline, we were able to highlight the issues and discover how each of us can be alert to the problem and the actions that we can take to try and stop it. The students of John Spence High School, named after the prominent local 19th century Quaker involved in abolition, played an impressive role in bringing the stories of slavery to life for fellow students, family and friends with an assembly and an art exhibition. We were really pleased when local primary schools made the slavery story part of their curriculum too. Holystone, King Edward and Spring Gardens pupils all visited the exhibition. Many people from the community shared their knowledge, skills and enthusiasm to enrich the project. Members of the exhibition group worked on research, planning, graphic design, gave talks and created drama. 
The Breaking Chains Choir gave concerts telling the slavery story with words and music. Professor Brian Ward of Northumbria University gave a talk linking the American freedom struggle to the abolition movement here in the Northeast. The local Quaker community invited us to tell Mary Ann's story at their meeting and raised funds for the project. A local group displayed their underground railway quilts, explaining how the designs had helped enslaved people to escape. Historic England provided funds and BBC North East gave us great publicity, showcasing the exhibition with slots on local radio and TV, which brought many visitors to the old low light to view the exhibition. And the final act, our service in the pouring rain, joined by many who had contributed to the project, we placed a stone for Mary Ann on her grave beside her husband. A lasting memorial to the life of a strong, and courageous woman who made North Shields her freedom home.